sincerity and truth. We try to go forward and live a sinless life. And then at Shavuot, Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was given through repentance, immersion, and the laying on of hands. Those three things are required to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So it says in Acts chapter 2, verses 1 and 4, it said, When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, just as Yeshua told them, to stay here in the city and wait for me. And he said, Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire. And it sat on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Hallelujah. If they would not have stayed there, if they were not keeping Shavuot, if they would have went their own way, they would not have received the gift of the Holy Spirit. And then Peter went out with boldness, right? Remember, when he spoke out and he said, it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And my men servants and all my maid servants. And I will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. He says, I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and the vapor of smoke. He said, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood, just like we saw the other night, before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. But it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be what? Saved. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's where we want to be, right? Amen. He also says that when they heard this in Acts, continuing on, they were cut to the heart. And they said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promises to you and to your children and to all who are afar off. That means everyone around the world. That promise is made to us. Even here in the Philippines on these remote islands from Jerusalem. That promise is for all of us. As many as the Lord our God will call. If you are here right now listening to this message. Or online listening to this message. You are being called by God to accept His gift that He wants to give to you. Hallelujah. It's your choice whether you want to receive it or not. He's not going to force you to receive it. But if you want to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, and we're going to have an immersion here after this message, and if you want to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, and this is the day to do it. It's not wait till next time, because I don't know when that next time is going to be. This is the day of salvation right here, today. Yeah. Hallelujah. So what did it say? Those who are gladly received His word were baptized. See, are you gladly, are you willing to gladly receive His word? And what happened on that day? 3,000 souls were added to the family of Messiah. 3,000 people on one day were baptized. And then later on, I have a couple of accounts here. When Philip was preaching in the name, he was concerning the kingdom of God, the name of Jesus, both men and women were baptized. So the apostles started going out, and they were preaching about the Messiah. People were being baptized all over the land, and it was starting to spread out. And it says, remember the word of God, how he said, John indeed baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. See, when they were baptized with John, they did not receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. It was only when Messiah was dead and, and resurrected that the gift of the Holy Spirit was given to men and women. I'm going to 
to skip that one. I want to talk about laying on of hands. Because some people don't understand this concept. It says in Acts 8, 4 verses to 8, it says, Therefore those who were scattered and went everywhere preaching the word, and Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Messiah to them. And the multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip. And hearing and seeing the miracles which he did, because unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many who were possessed, and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed, and there was great joy in the city that he went. But there was a certain man named Simon who practiced sorcery in the city, and he astonished the people of all Samaria, claiming that he was someone great. And this man had this power of God, and, he, and they heeded him because he had astonished them with his sorcery. Right? He was practicing magic, and they thought he had this power from God that was really from Hasatan, from Satan. But when he believed Philip, as he preached those things, he too was baptized. He believed and was baptized, and he was amazed seeing the miracles and signs which were done. But here is his error. He said, when the apostles were at Jerusalem, they heard that Samaria had received the word of God. Samaria was in northern Israel. And they sent Peter and John to them, who when they had come, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet it had not fallen upon them. See, they were baptized, they were immersed, but they did not receive the gift of the Holy Spirit yet. Why? Because they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord. Then they laid hands on them and they received the gift of the Holy Spirit. That laying on of hands is like an anointing from God and is a connection from someone who already has the Spirit. You're basically transferring that Spirit here to that person. It's coming. God is using your body almost like a, like a, 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 a conduit to be able to go into that other person. And so when Simon saw that the laying on of hands of the apostles, that was when the Holy Spirit was given. What did he try to do? He tried to offer them money. He tried to offer money to the apostles saying, Give me this power also that anyone on whom I lay hands may receive the Holy Spirit. He thought he could buy the power to lay hands on people when it's really a free gift from God. Amen. And only an anointed people can be the conduit to allow that to happen. Well, what did Peter say to him? He said, your money perish with you because you thought the gift of God could be purchased with money. He said, you have neither part nor portion for your heart is not right in the sight of God. And he said, repent therefore of your wickedness and pray, God, if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see that you are poisoned by bitterness and bound by iniquity. And so we have to make sure that our hearts are right with God. Amen. If you want this gift, you got to really want it. Because you can't, you can't fake it with God, right? You can't fake it. It's either you've got both feet in the water or you don't. If you're going to give yourself to God and you're going to follow Yeshua, you got to give Him your all because God wants the best of everything you have. But He loves you so much that He wants you to be part of His family. Amen. So there are three requirements to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit as we were going over. And I want to review them. We have to repent of our sins. Now that word repentance, you listening up here? That word repentance means that you want to turn from your sins. And you don't want to go and sin anymore. And what is sin? The transgression of the law. The transgression of the Bible. The, the commands that God gives us. Think about it like the transgression of the Ten Commandments. You don't want to do that anymore. Remember we went through the teaching of the Ten Commandments? So when you repent, you say, you, you don't want to do that anymore because all of us have sinned. 
All of us have lied, right? All of us have had bad thoughts about other people. All of us have probably stole something in our lives, took something that didn't belong to us. Maybe we don't respect our mothers and fathers like we should. Maybe we don't have uh, love for our, our brothers and sisters. All of us have sinned and fell short of the glory of God. And so he wants us to repent of those sins and ask Yeshua to come into our heart and say, Yeshua, Father, allow me to go forward in your grace and your mercy and have love for one another and have love for you and not to fall anymore. And once you really are broken and you're willing to do that and you want to go forward and live a blessed life, then you want to be immersed. That symbolizes your death, your burial, and your resurrection to a new creation in Messiah. The old man or woman is being put to death and the new man or woman, the new creation is being reborn. And then you want to have hands laid on you from a person of authority who has the Spirit of God in them to be that conduit from God to you, that tool in God's hand to just have that Holy Spirit enter in. You understand? Amen. So what does Yeshua tell us to do? He says, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, immersing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. That is what He tells us to do. See, when we get, when we receive the Holy Spirit and we start studying, and we start learning, and we're excited about God, and haven't we had a joyful time this whole week? Right? We're dancing, we're singing, we're praising God, we're fellowshipping. Look at all the family relations that are here. And we're building those bonds with God and with each other. And we're excited about that. And we want to go out and we want to share what we have just experienced here this week with other people. And you got to go take people and say, listen, I just had a great week celebrating the Lord's peace. Man, let me tell you what it's all about. And you can start sharing with them how the Lord touched each and every one of you. And what you experienced. And the joy of rejoicing before our God. You want to be able to share that with others because you're excited. You can't contain it within. You have to go out and share it with others because it bubbles up within you. There's a Hebrew word that's called paga. Can you say paga? paga? It means the Holy Spirit bubbles up within you and you can't contain it anymore. And you want to go out and you want to share it with other people. Hallelujah. Amen? So in Acts 21, it says, The God of our fathers has chosen you, us, that you should know His will and to see the just one, Yeshua, and to hear His voice from His mouth, which He speaks to us from His word. For you will be His witnesses to all men and women what you have seen and heard. And now He says, Why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Amen. So brothers and sisters, if you have not received the gift of the Holy Spirit, you want to dedicate yourself to Messiah today, join me in the pool over there with Brother June and Jimmy in about 15, 20 minutes. Maybe we'll do a song first. Maybe in a half hour we're going to go over there and we're going to do an immersion service. And everyone who wants to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, meet us at the pool with your bathing suits on. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And Father, I ask just anoint my family here that are gathered here together with us, Father, that you would just convict them that they will want to draw close to you and that they will want to receive the gift that you want for them, Father. That they will choose life and not death. And that they will glorify your name in heaven. And you will fill them with your Ruach, your Holy Spirit, and they will go forward in all their communities and all their families. And they will testify of you and the things that you have done in their lives today. So Father, we give them over to you. I can't do anything more than just to share the word with them, Father. It's up to you to convict their hearts, Father, and whether they're willing to accept you or not. I cannot force anyone, and you cannot force them. It has to be their choice, Father. So I ask, Lord, that you would inspire them, that you would allow them to choose life, that they would want to choose life and not death, that they may glorify your name 
the name of your son, Yeshua, whom you sent to be our sacrifice and to give us life. Amen. So we thank you, Father. We commit all this into your hand. We give it all to you. We give it over to you now, Father. Yes. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. 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 Oh, 
Wednesday night. And we're excited about what the Lord is doing. The Lord always has more for us. We think he's done. And he says, no, I'm not done yet. I got something more for you. Hallelujah. Well, you know, Jimmy and I, we may be physically tired for this week. But hey, we're spiritually on fire. And we're just waiting to see what more the Lord has to share with us right. and with you these, like, these next few days. So we're excited. I hope you are too. So let's go and let's go uh, enjoy the rest of this day with him.